All right, so this is a user story. Your data center will implode in 30 days. It is based on a true story, but the names and data center locations are, have been changed to protect the innocent. Um, so we are Stark and Wayne. We are a founding silver member of the Cloud Foundry Foundation. You know, we've been going to these summits for a very long time, I think since the inception. Yeah, I, we've been to every one of them. We've been to every one of them. Um, so we're here to help. We're, as I like to say, we're the leading Cloud Foundry and Cloud Native Technology Consultancy. And uh, myself, I'm Brian Segwin. I'm the COO of Stark and & Wayne. And with me is Bill Chapman. He's our VP of Engineering. So we wanted to have some fun with this because it's kind of a fun story. And fun. <laughs> so what, we, what we're doing here is we actually have an act. Or we, we, we've we've kind of orchestrated a play here for, for this. And um, so I will be playing the you know, the VP in charge of the cloud platform for, the, for, this, cust for this company. Um, and this is a platform of a multi-billion dollar company that has 300 business critical applications on it with 2,000 AIs and a whole bunch of data services, things like that. Um, so I had thought as this VP in charge of this platform that my director of engineering was taking care of the migration efforts because we knew this was a long time coming. We had our data center the contract was coming to a close. Um, so I thought everything was being handled, and I approached him one day. It, it, we're we're just a little bit about 30, just a little more than thirty days out from this uh, this data center migration that we would have. And I, I talked to him. I said, "All right, so what's the plans? What's the progress? You know, can I have a report?" And he says to me, "You know, I don't have anything." And he, by the way, here's my notice. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> so. At this point, I'm sitting here thinking, all right, well, my, my, my director of engineering has left. I really only have a few options. I could quit. Um, I could beg for an extension from our data center people, but apparently they had already sold this space, and they're forcing the contract out. Okay. Or I could find someone dumb enough who thinks they can actually do this all in 30 days. So I hire a new director of engineering. <laughs> so please welcome Bill Chapman, who is our Hello. new director of engineering, that says he thinks he can do this. We find our fearful C-level executive pacing in their office. They've just got the bad news. Bill. What are our options here? Well, I think our primary focus should be uh, standing up a new platform in the new data center. And we will have the application developers each have a maintenance window where they will deploy their applications in the new data center. Um, you, we have 300 applications here. And there's 300 applications teams and about like three times the size of that in people, do you think you can orchestrate all of those teams to get in sync and do all of this in, a, in this small of a window? Maybe we should go to the whiteboard. So what you're saying is we've got our Cloud Foundry and its plat individual platforms. We've got our data services. Uh, we've got 300 applications, 2,000 application instances. Uh, one thing we haven't mentioned, we've got six brokered service teams. So that means uh, those are all a separate issue. Those need to be migrated as well. Uh, and we have various user-defined services that we don't have here. Um, it might make more sense to deal with the six brokered serv services teams and then treat the platform as a data service as itself, on itself, migrate it the same way. Let me, hmm, well, let's, uh, I mean, I like the idea that six teams versus 300. I mean, that's right. a lot easier. You know, I mean, so how would you do the migration? Like, how would this work Like, well, for the migration? Let me talk to the team about that. Okay. Uh, we have some options. Okay. They've all slept on it. Calls have been made. Teams have been alerted. No one is happy. <laughs> no one is happy. But plans are in action. Hey boss, good news. 
I think we have a plan that we can work with. Okay. So we've got a staging platform, we've got a pre-production platform, we've got a production platform. We've got a data services tenant in Poughkeepsie. Uh, we need to migrate all of the databases. Okay. We need uh, to migrate all of the blobs. These blob stores could be large. Uh, we don't know how fast the pipe is going to be between the data centers. You know the second data center is in Anchorage, Alaska. Okay. So uh, we may need to fly it there. That is a possibility. Well, fly it there. Um, I mean, I guess I could talk to the CEO about a corporate jet, but I don't think he's going to be... I mean, there's a lot of risk associated to that. I mean, it's, it's not likely. We need to do some investigation. I think the pipe will be fine. We should be able to sync everything over. I'm just keeping you aware. Okay. So, so with this plan, I mean, is there going to be any like freezes to development? Like, what, what's our what's our you know what's our downtime going to look like? Well. Most of the risk is going to fall on the service-bound teams. So our, our database-backed services, uh, our MySQL team, our, our RabbitMQ team, those teams are going to need to migrate their data services individually. Those are going to have to be coordinated with all six of those teams. The platform itself, um, we won't have to worry too much about freezing development, but we will have to freeze deployment. So okay. the developers will not be able to deploy to the platform while it's in active migration. The data service teams, on the other hand, that's a different story. The data service teams may have to uh, have uh, extended periods where there may be outages that affect some of the applications. We're hoping to mitigate that. Uh, what, might be what might work best is if we deploy those data services to a separate location, proxy to that location, the new, the apps won't know the difference, there will just be a small cut over. But we're not sure yet. We're still in day one here. Well, so what's our data loss risk here? Data loss risk is minimal. If you remember, data migration is really just disaster recovery that you get to plan. So what, what happens if it doesn't work? Are, am I asking the CEO for the corporate jet or are we playing ice road truckers and trying to drive this to Alaska? Well, once the new platform is deployed, we can always fall back to what I said on day one. Uh, the application developers can just individually repush their applications and it will converge on the new state. Okay. So, I mean, how many people do, we, do you actually need to get this done? I would say we need at least one member of each data service team okay. that knows that data service and they can plan out their migrations individually. Okay. Since I run the platform team, uh, I will focus on that, and I think I'm going to need two engineers. Uh, 30 days is going to be cutting it kind of close, but they're going to need to be focused on the process. Yeah, I mean, how much time is, that, is this data going to take to sync? Like, it, uh, do we even have enough time to sync the data with our 30-day window? If we use the jet. But seriously, <laughs> but seriously no, I think we, the blob store is our biggest concern. Those are, those are the bits of uh, source code and stuff that's compiled and sitting up there, those can be very large. Uh, the last time I had to sync one, it took about 10 hours. Oh. Uh, but we'll sync it ahead of time. Okay. So by the time we get to the actual migration date, we're only syncing the difference. So you're gonna have whatever has changed since the last time. If we sync it daily, it's only gonna be 24 hours worth of, worth of, of change. That sounds... Couple that with the deployment freeze so that the developers can't actually push anything different and that last 24 hours might have nothing. There might be no difference. So we'll already know the platform is ready when we actually do the final switch over. Well, that sounds promising. It's been a rough two weeks. Some things went well, some things went very poorly. Jane, the platform team lead, came in Friday and said, don't forget I'm on vacation next week. <sighs> So we've managed to migrate staging. And the data services that are needed for the applications in staged, staging were handled by the individual application or uh, data service teams. Pre-prod and production are still not provisioned. But 
we have automation to run once those are available. Well, so I, I spoke to Tom. Why did it take you guys a, a, a week to get uh, all the networking stuff that you needed for the environment? Turns out the networking team was complaining that there isn't enough IP space available for uh, what we're asking for the new platform. And remember that since we're doing a direct migration of the platform, we have to have the same IP space available in the new data center. So this is a, a common problem we have with, with networking uh, issues with we want too many IP addresses. It's a large platform. All, all, all right. I mean, what other blockers do we need to worry about? Uh, at this point, uh, since we've done the migration to staging, we've proven out the idea. Uh, we have gotten that test in place. The plan seems to work as expected, but we're really pushing it for time. Also, two of the data service teams were not yet able to migrate. Okay, so it took you two weeks to get what I'm looking at is one environment. So like by math, I'm sitting here thinking, all right, it's going to take us two weeks for the next turn to the next two environments. So that's four weeks out. We only have two weeks left. I mean. Well, I understand, but the results in staging have been encouraging. And the reason it took so long is because we did a large upfront proof of concept. Uh, we have the. Uh, excuse me? I thought you said this was going to work. Well, why do you need to do a proof of concept if you've done this before? I might not have done this before. <laughs> but I promise you it works now. <laughs> also, by the way, the Stark and Wayne team has a really cool product called Shield that helped us out a lot along the way. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> The migration is complete. Things have gone pretty well. Some developers are grumpy, but developers are always grumpy. The team is reflecting on the month. So although this was successful, uh, I still yet to see, seem ungrateful to our director of engineering who has actually pulled this off. So Bill, can you actually confirm that we did not lose any data? Well, the data services teams have uh, informed me that their migrations were successful. I'm going to trust them. <laughs> Honestly, it really is just a expansion of the application migration paradigm. When you, when you push an application, you are going to move the data, move the application, cut over DNS. This is the exact same thing. We've just done it for 300 applications. Uh, I'm fairly confident that it went pretty well. I have talked to the leads of every data service team. They have confirmed that each data service is intact and running as expe expected. And we did have some grumpiness from some of the developers when they couldn't deploy, but uh, they were all happy to find that their data was where it needed to be when they were able to get back to work. So when, you know, when we kind of spoke a couple weeks ago, you said we might actually have like minutes of actual application downtime and only like a 10 hour window of uh, development downtime where they couldn't push our applications. Uh, what was the downtime we actually incurred? So we had a 24 hour deployment freeze for our application developers. So we had 300 developers who were not able to do, you know, their weekly deployments, but uh, some of them missed deadlines. We didn't do a very good job communicating that to them. But with respect to actual downtime, uh, it was measured in minutes. Oh. <laughs> the data services were migrated ahead okay. of time. Things were proxied accordingly. Uh, when the platform came up, it converged on the proper state, and uh, there were only about five applications that weren't running as expected. Uh, one of them is still being troubleshot. It turns out it wasn't running as expected before the migration. <laughs> so you're the scapegoat? Yes. OK. So you know, in all honesty, I'm looking at the, the, the projects that the team's still working on, and I still see that there's migration efforts going on. And you know, everything's been up and running for a few days now. So why are people still working on this? There's still a lot of questions about the migration. There are still developers who had problems before the migrations that weren't noticed. 
They followed it, us to the other platform. When we did our due diligence up front, we knew what state every application was in, but it turned out some of the developers didn't know what state their own applications were in. So we're still fighting through that. You've told me our mission statement is to be helpful, so that's what we're doing. Okay, so how much longer will they need to be on this project? It's mostly done. We're gonna need somebody partially engaged for both uh, PR for the platform team so that they understand what happened and why this was a tremendous effort and success on our end. But uh, we're also gonna wanna help developers so that they understand uh, that there really aren't any differences in the new platform. Uh, most of them should have been uh, unaware. If it wasn't for the 24 hour freeze on deploying, most of the developers would have been unaware that we moved the platform 6,000 miles away. Awesome. Well, I mean, good job, and thank you for your efforts. And uh, as a token of our appreciation, please accept this pen. This is my pen. Nope. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions? <laughs> so, you know, this is actually, you know, we, we kind of took some liberty of what actually happened from the, from the comedic standpoint, but uh, this is actually what happened uh, for a migration effort that Stark and Wayne was involved with um, not, uh, last year, and uh, it, was, it was crazy, you know, they, we have a customer that comes to us and they, you know, they say, well, we only have 30 days or otherwise, you know, our, um, the data center is going to delete all our data. And we said, well, can't you talk to the data center people? And can't you uh, do this? Can't you do that? And they said, well, we had all these conversations. And the answer is no. Do, do you think we can do it? And, and, and the funny thing is, is they were going off of, you know, a timeline and quotes that we had given them like three to six months previous. So immediately they come knock on our door and they say, hey, we have this emergency. Can you still commit to the, the timeline that you said was a best case scenario? And we kind of said, uh, yes and no. Uh, and we actually had a lot of really big discussions on it and, and we did do some proof of concepts before saying yes. And The other fascinating part about it was something that was kind of implicit in this, but it was, I mean, there's a couple ways you can do this migration, there's a lot of ways, but the easiest way is to just deploy a new platform and to get all of your developers on the same page and allow them to CF push on the other side. There literally were 300 development teams that nobody had control over. So at the end of the day, uh, they wanted to leave them out of the situation. So what we had to do is deploy the uh, platform move all of the data and the blobs and the, and the bits that matter over to the new platform and then just hope everything converged on the same exact state that it was in uh, in the other data center. Um, there is a technical talk on this concept or on this coming today at five o'clock, 515 and the actual engineers who did the migration will be giving you the uh, detail about it but uh, we just wanted to kind of talk through uh, kind of the high level here. Yes. Would you have uh, um, should you have had the chance to have the development teams actually push their apps into the new data center? Would you have chosen to? I believe that if we thought we could have coordinated that many different teams uh, and given them a minimal downtime window, because that was the real problem. The problem was lights out in this. I mean. We didn't have to go lights out here, lights on here, because what they did is they proxied all the data services from a, a third location. But it, in the beginning, we didn't know that. We didn't know how that was going to happen. We were a week and a half or two weeks into the process before we knew how they were going to handle the data services. So uh, that was the concern there, was that if all the data moves, then all 300 teams have to be on board right away, and all CF push their apps, so they're going to get downtime until they actually CF push. So we figured moving it uh, and letting it converge on that state and not even really caring if the develop, caring is the wrong term, but not worrying about whether the development teams knew even, because uh, from our perspective, we weren't the ones notifying the development teams. We're under the impression that a lot of them weren't even told this was happening. Because once uh, DNS was managed and data was moved, um, they wouldn't know any difference. 
because all all the endpoints were identical in the new data center. Honestly, in the beginning, we had we had many heated discussions about the best way to do it. We've done it before, uh, but this the, the the developers might not know about it was the real clincher here, because we had to make sure that they didn't experience any significant downtime. Uh, and even when we got to the other end, we were pretty pretty happy that it worked. <laughs> I mean, but now we know it works. It's a viable strategy because we've proven it out. But. Um, it, it, we had some concerns all the way through the process. And, and the timeline was such that we didn't even have time to identify the teams much as to work. Yeah. yeah. We, all we had access to was the CF endpoints. So we could profile the system. We could uh, fi figure out what's there. But as I joked in the talk, we didn't know if all of those developers even knew what state their apps were supposed to be in in any given, or, you know, uh, any given part. Or some of those apps didn't even have teams assigned to them. They were just there, and some, some automation somewhere was pushing it. Yeah. And what was neat about this is any teams that were modern uh, and being proactive about their development and had pipelines that were working on things, all of that automation should have just worked because all the endpoints stayed the same and all the access was proxied appropriately. So it was, it was pretty neat to see happen. MKB right here is, is who uh, accomplished this feat and, and we just scratched on the surface but his effort was Herculean. It was actually impressive, very impressive. <laughs> Thank you. I, I do want to say that uh, the, the satire about actually flying it there or driving it there was a legitimate conversation that we had. Yes, <laughs> that was legitimate. Right, and, and, and we were we need we're like, well, how big are the blobs, and are we going to have to sneaker net it to you know to the other state, and, and uh, we couldn't believe we were having that conversation in, in 2017. Anyways, we couldn't believe we were having that conversation, and it was had. <laughs> are we uh, close? Yeah, we still have some time if if we have more questions. Questions are good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.